The second module in the classroom management course now deals with the communication in class. Try to remember your student stage and think about which teachers did you like? Who was your favorite in school? And invariably the answer will be the teacher who was good at communication. Communication in class is an extremely important skill that teachers must have. They must have. Under communication in class, we need to remember certain simple techniques. The first one being that as soon as you enter the class, have a nice, bright and cheerful smile on your face. Always enter the class with a positive attitude and with a happy, clean mind. How does it help? It creates a positive wave of energy in the class. The children know that you are willing to teach them. The children know that you are looking forward to an interaction with them and it really spreads a cheerfulness among them too. It is said that we have some mirror neurons and the smiling neurons are called mirror neurons in the human body. You all must have experienced that when we smile at a person, that person instantly responds with a smile on his face. The same will happen in the class too. Imagine you enter the class with a nice bright smile on your face and you set the whole class smiling. What a wonderful way to start your class, isn't it? The second thing we need to remember as teachers is that we should use some empathy statements. Empathy statements are putting yourself into the shoes of the students and trying to think what they are feeling at that moment. For example, you may say that uh, I know you all have just finished a geography class and you are waiting for the next period that is the PT period. You all are willing to go on the ground right now. I may say as a teacher that it is raining outside, it is pouring and I am sure all of you must be willing to go out and drench yourselves in the rain. So if you can reverberate the feelings of the children, if you can repeat what is going on in their minds in your class, they will feel emotionally closer to you. They will feel psychologically attached to you and it will help you to bring them towards learning easily. The third simple technique which we need to remember as teachers is that when we start teaching in the class, we should use simpler, simple openers for transition. The children need to switch from the previous subject to the next subject, from the previous activity to the next activity. So use some simple opening lines for transition to help them to move on from one learning part to the next part. Just say that, are you all okay today? Is it really hot today? Uh, can you open your books? And just utter a few apparently meaningless sentences in the beginning of the class which create a mood, which help them start listening to you and then begin your content. So these things will help you start off your class very well and it will go on uh, rising and rising to the next level, I'm sure. As we communicate to the students in our class, we always uh, tend to scold them, we appreciate them. Regarding appreciation or scolding, we need to remember a few things as teachers. The praise which we give to our students should be specific. We should not uh, give general remarks to children as far as possible. It should be activity specific, whatever good performance the child has delivered, the praise which you give should be limited to that. It should be contingent also. You should use your words very carefully when you are praising a child. It should not be very, very verbose. It should be uh, precise what you want to say. Another thing we need to remember is more important that is about scolding children. When we reprimand a child, it should not be a general remark. We should not label the personality of the child, but it should be limited to the misbehavior or the wrong thing that the child has committed. Uh, as a teacher, we always need to remember that positive strokes should come more than the negative strokes that we are giving the students. Psychological experts say that the ratio of these positive and negative interactions with our students should be 5 is to 1. And sadly, all of us always experience that teachers are always known as scolding individuals in their children. They always tend to give more of scoldings than praises. So let us remember 5 is to 1 is the ratio of positive to negative interactions in the class. Also, uh, we need to use a variety of communication patterns in our class. What communication patterns can we use? 
uh, there is teacher to student communication number one number two is student to student one to one communication and number three is many to many student to student communication so as a teacher i need to design my learning activities in such a manner that all these different varieties of communication patterns are alternated one after the other if i always design my class in such a way that i stand in front i go on speaking and the children are expected to always listen to me it will be very boring it will be monotonous for them so I have to alternate between teacher to student communication and student to student communication. We all experience that children learn a lot from each other. They learn a lot from the interactions they have within groups or within pairs also. So using these different communication patterns is our duty as a teacher. It will definitely enhance the communication you have with your class. While communicating in your class, always remember that the message you send may not always be equal to the message received by the students. What you want to say, the children may not understand exactly that. They may not receive exactly what you mean. Therefore, always as a good teacher, we should have a practice of paraphrasing. We should ask the children to repeat what we have said, especially when we are giving some very important messages to the children. When you want to set some rule in the class, when you want to give some very important notice in the class, asking the students to paraphrase the sentence for you, asking the students to paraphrase the notice for you ensures that they have really understood what you want to convey. There is one more benefit of this practice. It puts an onus on the children. When the children utter, verbally utter the words which you have said just in the class, then they take up the responsibility unknowingly to follow that rule. So, habit, so the habit of paraphrasing these rules for the children is extremely good. We must develop this habit in our class. Also, many teachers tend to use humor in the class. It is a common misconception that teachers who use a lot of humor in the class, who always have a laughter in the class are good teachers. But unfortunately, it is not true. Humor should be used very carefully. It is like a double-edged sword. It may hurt you back if you cannot use it skillfully. Teachers also tend to use sarcasm. Be very careful that sarcasm is not aimed at the students in your class. Crack jokes on yourself once in a while. Be ready to laugh at yourself. That will create a healthy atmosphere in the class. It will give a very positive message to the children. Do remember these tips while communicating in your class and be an effective teacher. Thank you.